Grunfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5, Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Hi guys, it's Anish Giri here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the game that I played against a Spanish hustler on streets of Barcelona. It's a quick and a very exciting and action-packed game. So do check it out. It features one of my favorite openings, the Niner Defense. Let's go. Okay, actually he's not really a hustler. Ruben is a very nice guy. Starts with e4, c5, knight f3, d6. What's your rating? Uh, 17. <laughs> Open Sicilian, Ruben knows his stuff. Knight of 6, knight of 3, a6. I asked him what his rating was, just to be sure he doesn't know too much theory. Bishop e2, reasonable line, trying to castle. e5. Yeah, he knew his theory. Knight here, bishop e7, castle, castle. Both sides castling now, he should develop the bishop, I should develop my bishop. Or he can go for the f4 plan, which eventually he does. King h1, preparing f4, going out of this diagonal. Rook e8, all theory, I was prepped. F4. Bishop e3. F4 first. F4. Knight c6. If f5, I'll go for knight b4 and d5 perhaps, or b5, b4. Bishop e3. Now I take. The bishop lost the temple and bishop e3. Bishop takes f4. H6. Preparing bishop f8. Awaiting bishop g5. Queen d2. Mm -hmm. Wants to double. Bishop f8, rook d1, knight e5. Mm. Pressure is on. E4 pawn is weak, D6 pawn is weak. I've got pressure here. Maybe knight G6 opening the file. Maybe B5, maybe Bishop B7. What's Ruben gonna do? Ruben, by the way, owns a nice restaurant, NHS club, that he invited us to. Nice guy. But likes to think. Not easy to find a plan for white here. Black is very comfortable. Maybe drop the bishop back. Maybe bring the knight into the center. Maybe a4, restricting b5. Which one is he gonna go for? Not easy. Bishop g3. Maybe intending bishop h4. Opening the f-file for the rook. Bishop h4 is not a real threat, so I go b5. Bishop h4, I've got g5, or even bishop e7. All right, welcome everyone to another session of Banter Blitz. Uh, today I'm going to be playing black against e4 and showing my repertoires, which are the Berlin and the classical Sicilian. Um, so we're going to give this a try. When you challenge me, please just challenge. Please just try to challenge me with white only. Um, I don't know how to set these settings or if I can see whether this works or not, but we'll do my best. So we'll give this a try. The first person I'm going to play with, and make sure you're online when you challenge me. I see someone named Slow Jin has challenged me and he's online, so we're gonna play. So good luck to you, Slow Jin. I'm gonna put my um, the links to my courses on Chessable both on YouTube and on Chess24. Uh, I don't have a Twitch account, sadly, so I can't put it there. Um, in the meantime, though, just letting everyone know, I will be responding only to the um, to the comments on uh, Chess24. I'm not following YouTube or Twitch. I can only have so many screens open at once. And luckily I have figured out how to fix the issue with all of my pieces going to the wrong squares. So that works nicely. No more mouse slips. But yeah, so this first game against Slow Jin, I'm playing my classical Sicilian repertoire. Uh, he's played Queen takes D4, which deviates from the main lines. But um, I'm quite happy with this move Knight F6. I like this move order more than playing Knight C6 first. Um, and I actually played this position with black against David Anton in Prague. Um, so here he plays e5, which forces us into this direct variation, but I think it ends up pretty well for black. So uh, we go queen a5 check, take this bishop to break the pin, I will take his queen back. And it gets a little messy briefly, but I do think black ends up in good shape. So basically here, um, in this position, the point is that if he goes and takes my rook with knight c7, I should get enough... Um, Counterplay his knight on a8 will get trapped. I'll take his knight in the center, and if he moves his knight on, um, if he moves his knight on d4 out of the way, I can go knight d5. So he's going to go take the rook, and then we'll see if um, the big test is going to be: can I remember all of my stuff? So bishop g5, I don't remember. 
this checking this move, but it doesn't look very good. Um, so I can, for example, go like e5, castles, bishop d6. I can also flick in knight e4 if I want, but I think I just like going e5 and bishop d6. This should solidify my center really nicely. And if I can ever take this knight on a8, um, I should just win the game. So the only question is, can he do something before I go like king c6, bishop f5? I think here the answer should be no, but we'll see. Maybe he has something in store for me. Okay, so f4. Um, King c6, f e5, bishop e5, rook h e1. That's a little bit annoying. Um, I can start with knight e4 here. I kind of like that this way. I can um, bolster the position with f6 as needed. So let's just go knight e4. And uh, if I can keep the position closed for long enough to take his knight on a8 without losing my center, I should win very easily. So we'll see if he can do something about that. You should probably try f e5 now, bishop e5, and then maybe he can go bishop e3 actually is annoying. But even then, I suspect I have a good position after, say, king c6, bishop d4, bishop f4 check, and then bishop g4 or something. I'll take his knight, and then my bishop's got really good. So rook f1 should be wrong. Um, this one uh, I don't think is going to work. So I'm going to take his bishop to solidify everything, put my king on e6, and now next up is bishop d7. I will take his knight, and then I should win. The knight always gets trapped in the corner. The only question is, can white like hurt me in the meantime while I have to like spend my moves capturing it? And I don't think he's going to be able to pressure my center hard enough here. If rook d1, as he played, I can just go bishop d7. He will get the d4 pawn, but that's not nearly enough. Uh, my two bishops should completely dominate the game. Um, so, uh, yeah, after rook d4, rook a8, the bishops are just absolutely monstrous, and I think what it's done for. Yeah, so rook d4, rook a8. He can go rook h4 if he wants, but just bishop e7, for example, should be good enough. Um, so yeah, just I'm going to do my best to look back and forth between the chat and the board. I actually mm -hmm. physically have two laptops here because when I resize my screen for uh, the first one, it it um, misbehaves and makes the pieces go to the wrong scores, but here we're fine. Uh, so yeah, any questions in the Chess24 chat, I'm happy to answer. Uh, it can be about the chessable courses or the repertoires that I've made or really anything else. But yeah, this game is just sort of a formality at this point. Um, just have to figure out the best way to close it out. I think rook h8 followed by h6 is a good place to start. Um, I would like to be able to play f5 and get these pawns moving. So h6, um, if he lets me take on g5, I'll go rook h5, but this will not help him either. So we're going to go f5, gain the space, and then maybe like anchor with bishop f3 and play e4, maybe just play e4 directly. Um, the king side pawn mass should very easily win the game. All right, so let's just go e4. It seems easy enough. Um, yeah, now bishop g3. He didn't need to hang that, but of course the position was lost anyway. Like if rook g1 or something, go rook g6. All right, so that hangs the other rook, and then we're good to go. Opinion on the Kalashnikov? It's not a great opening. I mean, if white isn't like well prepared, you're probably going to be okay, but it's not something I think you can rely on consistently. Um, like, you can play it once or twice, and, like, when people aren't ready for it and they don't find the most challenging way, you should be fine. Like, it's not a terrible opening like that, but I do think you should, um, uh, you can't rely on it against people who are prepared. Are you planning an E4 lifetime repertoire? I've toyed with the idea. It's just, it's, it's a huge amount of work, and it was easier for me to do that work during the pandemic when I didn't have tournaments to play, but now my schedule is very busy, and E4 is probably a much larger repertoire than D4. Plus there's just so many repertoires to compete with. Like we have what, uh, so Geary, Saric, Grandelius, Gajewski are like all publishing E4 analysis. It's like, I don't know. I mean, would people actually buy it? Like, I just sort of don't think, uh, people would. So it doesn't sound like it would be a great use of my time. Um, so, but my next uh, chessable course is going to be the Shanklin workbook, which is going to be a middle game course about a bunch of, uh, with a bunch of exercises. All right, so um, good game to slow gin. Let's play with aerial boundaries. Good luck to you. Playing is E4 only, so we'll see. Do I want to play classical Sicilian or Berlin? Maybe I'll try a Berlin just to see if it's sort of, I've always said the Berlin is not a great opening to play against guys 
we're much lower rated because um, it's very easy for white to force a draw. But if white is feeling ambitious, it's actually a totally great opening to play for a win. Well, let's see. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to abort this one. Let's see who else wants to play. Um, we'll play with... Um, Let's play with uh, Zeeland Zen. And I got black, good stuff. So good luck, Zeeland Zen. Is that a picture of Hikaru? Uh, there is a very distorted version of his face, but okay. Let's see. What do I think is the best Sicilian and why? Um, it depends. I would say in terms of objective value, it has to be the Nidorf. In terms of practicality, it's probably the classical or maybe the Taimanov. Um, it sort of depends on what you're looking for. Um, at the very, very, very highest level for like world championship level, I actually think probably the best Sicilian is Sveshnikov, but um, let's see. What Sicilian would you recommend looking if there is something more sound than the classical, but less there than the Nidor, if that's impossible? Um, so basically in terms of soundness, I think the classical should be very clearly number three, only behind Sveshnikov and Nidorf, And I think that those two both have significantly more theory. All right, so bishop c4 is not a very challenging move. Um, and I did lose to this move once uh, when I was like 2,500 against the 2,300 and what was my first loss in a long time. Um, how does one efficiently study the lifetime repertoire courses? I don't actually know. I've never done it. I've only written them. Um, I mean, I've looked at some of other people's courses, but usually because I've done a huge amount of opening work myself already, um, I'm mostly just looking for like if they have any new ideas and it doesn't take me that long or, or if I'm actually playing these guys, you know, I'll study it. So, for example, I remember when I played H4 on move three against Peter Spidler, um, of course, I checked uh, what he had given in his course to make sure I was ready. He played something else, which I think was also good. All right. Zeeland Zen has left the game. That's a bummer. Um, but yeah. Uh, Let's see who else is here. Okay, this guy has left the game, so I guess just a few more seconds and then I can play with someone else. All right, so I don't like just doing the claim win, but because other people are waiting in line, I don't feel like that's a very effective use of time. So let's um, let's play with uh, Pocket Knife. I think it should be fine. Uh, but no, I'm playing white. This I'm supposed to just play black today. So guys, remember, you're only challenging me with the white pieces. Um, so it looks like uh, Shadow Mate has challenged me correctly, so I'll play against Shadow Mate. Um, good luck to you, Shadow Mate. We'll have a good game. And yeah, so the Berlin is not a great opening to play down a thousand points because there's so many forced draws possible. Um, it's much better opening to play against people who are your peers. But I'm going to give it a try and see if I can um, play. It. Were you surprised to see Nepo dominate the field so much in the Canada tournament? Yes and no. I was not surprised to see him dominate in the beginning. I've said that I do believe he is the second best player in the world uh, when he's on form. I think his big issue has always been fitness, uh, stamina, both mental and physical. Um, and uh, so what you'll often see with him is he plays really well in the beginning of tournaments and then starts to struggle later on. Uh, and so here, I forget if I can play knight e4 or not. Let's just start with knight c6. Um, if knight f3, I can go knight takes e4. Um, so, uh, but what happened here was he, he brought that like really high level and he got a bit fortunate for sure, but he also just basically just brought this really high level of chess, but he brought it throughout and he never started faltering later on. Okay. F4 just King's Gambit, huh? All right. This feels like it's begging for 94. So let's give it a try. Um, but yeah, he's just played much better than everyone else. It's funny, actually, he never had to show any endgame technique at all the entire tournament. He did not win a single endgame. So I've always wondered if his technique was that amazing and we just didn't find out here because he was just crushing people in the middle game. Like he beat Ferrugia and Report, he just basically Ferrugia he just checkmated twice. Report he basically checkmated. Uh who else did he beat? Um uh Good question. I'm already starting to get foggy on the games. Um, but yeah, basically it felt like his games were being decided by direct attacks. He beat Ferrugia twice by mating him. He beat Report by mating him. Um, he beat Duda by mating him. He basically never had to show any endgame technique. So 
Yeah. All right. So here I have to be a little bit careful. Like I was thinking to play bishop c5, but then bishop takes f7 check looks annoying. Um, so I think I'm just going to go bishop e7 and get myself castled. So the, I think the policy should be safety first here. And once I play d6, um, I should be safe enough, and then hopefully my better structure will matter. But actually, I'm wondering if it was just a mistake to play knight takes c3. This accelerated his development pretty well. Yeah, so here I'm going to go d6, and my point is that if e d6, bishop d6, bishop d6, that structure would, structural change would favor white. But I have this in-between move rookie a check, which would disturb his coordination a lot. So we'll see if, but actually rook e8 check, he can play bishop e5. Do I care? Knight takes e5, queen d8, knight f3 is good, so no, I don't care. We go rook e8 check, and this should disturb white's coordination, and now his king is not great, and I think black should have a good position. You can go rook e1, though, and he's probably fine. Um, yeah, so how do I want to do this now? Maybe bishop g4, if... Do I want to check on d6 first? Sort of worried about this bishop on c4, like mating me somehow. If, if queen b6 check, king somewhere, bishop g4, he has bishop f7. So let's start with bishop g4 now, but then he takes on d6. You know what? We're going to go bishop e6. That bishop is annoying me too much. I don't believe black can be better here anymore. I think white has to be fine, but um, that bishop is just too annoying. I can't deal with it. Um, Do I think Nepo will be able to strengthen the psychological part for the match with Carlson? Well, first of all, I guess we have to see if Magnus plays. Um, I, I mean, which I guess is not a guarantee based on his statements. I mean, we never really know. Uh, I've never been able to understand what goes on in that man's mind. He's far too brilliant for me. But um, I do think that if, I mean, it's hard to say, but I think he's played much better this candidates than he did when he won last time. Um, last time, like... His problems with stamina really showed when he lost round seven twice, and he never really had to show the stamina because um, because the tournament was chopped in half, which was really helpful for him, I think. And then um, it's uh, that's that was really helpful. Uh, so he also got very lucky to pick up a totally free point against Alexeyanko, who confused his theory and just like got a lost position almost immediately. Um, but this time it feels like he's played much stronger. So if he can keep up the same level he's played here against Magnus, I think he'll have a much better shot. But again, that idea that he just hasn't show, had to show any endgame technique at all is really potentially disturbing if you're rooting for him um, because, uh, you know, that's something that you're going to have to do against Magnus. I don't think you're just going to be able to mate him over and over again. All right, so here things have gotten sort of tricky. Um, but uh, I should be able to put this away. So I think I'm going to start with this one and then rook b8 and then, but no, then he's going to have knight h4 just in time. So this actually is close. All right, we're going to go b5 and then knight c1 maybe? I don't know. Um, I'm finding it hard to take this game that seriously for some reason. Um, knight c1 comes. Um, Shadow mate, this is clearly not an 1800 for what it's worth. He's playing much better than that. All right, so rook c5. Let's make sure to try to keep winning chances by not letting him exchange off the last pair of pawns. He does have to be a little bit careful here, but maybe he's just making a draw. Yeah, okay, there. I was hoping for 96, but he has rook g7. Does it actually work there then? King h8, he has rook f7. Um. Yeah, so I'm not winning this game, probably. Let's go here. What do you know, guys? Berlin made a draw. No, no, maybe I can hope to sideline his knight somehow and make trouble, but I don't think so. This just seems like a big top loss. Yeah, I should have played better when uh, he sacrificed this pawn. I don't know. We'll see. His knight's a little sidelined. Oh, did I just blunder the game away and actually lose this? Wow, that's really bad. I don't even have knight c5. Oh, man. All right, it's going to be a bad day, guys. I can tell already. All right, here we go. Losing to 1800. All right, so let's um, let's see who else wants to play. All right, GM Rogpo with 5,100 rating. Let's see if I can get some rating back. 5,000, that's a pretty high rating. Normally, I'd only play with black, but because we have someone rated 5,000, I have to go for it. 
Yeah, that was a really bad game for me. All right, let's see if I can play the D4 repertoire from Chess Little. 5,000, huh? That's a hell of a rating, buddy. All right, so Chess Little repertoire against the 5,000. Four, E3. C5, still following the trustable repertoire if I can remember it, which is a big if. Here I think I was supposed to play B4 first before. Um, yeah, and this was the point that you can go H4 here now because if black plays for like knight G4, and then the structure will favor white, or the change in the structure will favor white. So here I think A3 is fine, um, but I'm not sure. It's been foggy on the details. I think this is right. And now black goes like 94 or something. Um, yeah, so take, we'll go 95. This is all pretty normal stuff, I think. This is all in the course. And I thought this was a little annoying for black, but we'll see. I've always seen queen d5 here. I'm not sure that they have included a5 and a3 or not, but queen d5 I thought was the move. b5, wow. That really seems like it's asking for trouble. All right, because now he's not going to get counterplay. So let's see. Queen g4 is probably a bit too much. Let's just start with bishop b2. I don't believe he's going to take h4. That seems insane. Um, and if I'm able to just castle and go like queen c2, I think I should be able to pressure his position pretty nicely. All right, so queen d5. But now that he's not actually, the queen on d5 makes less sense now because he's not actually threatening um, b takes c5. So we'll see if he can put me under pressure. f6, sure, happy to tuck the bishop back home. Maybe he can try like a b4, Rook a1 and queen b3, but I have a feeling I should just be good there even with a pawn loss because my activity is so so powerful. So I don't know if I want to play h6 before castling or not. Um, I think probably not. There's no need to rush. It just feels like it'll make it easier for him to play g5 and get counterplay. And here if I go queen c2, f3, I'm going to kill him. And the question is, can he do something before I pull that off? Maybe he can if he goes like rook a6 here, but then a4 is even possible. Um, I guess he can play rook a7. Okay, f5 I don't think is a great move. Now I should be able to play f3. But I don't know. Maybe this guy will teach me something. He's playing really slow for somebody rated 5100. <laughs> I don't know how that rating came up. He is a GM apparently. All right, bishop g5, sure. Um, so I guess the point is prophylaxis against f3. Um, let's anchor the bishop on the e5 score. Seems pretty nice. Now I can go for like g3 later. f4, that was his point. But here can I play f3 and he's totally dead? Seems nice. I think this game's over, but what do you know? Um, I'm not trusting ratings if I'm beating 5100s and losing to 1800s. I really question the veracity of these ratings. <laughs> So e takes f3, e4 traps his queen. Bishop takes f3 leads to a totally winning endgame. All right, so, okay, you want queen b3, but, like, you're losing all of your pawns. So it takes, and then e takes f4, and I have some small army of pawns. This seems pretty convincing. All right, bishop h4, I guess... Let's go rook f3 to get ready for g3 and also go take this pawn. And it also after b2, it means that he'll not be able to play rook takes a3. So I think this game is totally finished. Um, yeah, that one. Let's go rook h3. Kick this bishop away. And 
Oh, if this is 5,100, I'm confused. All right, this game is over. Who is the most famous person you ever met? I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't care about famous people, so. All right. Well, Rogapa resigned, and yeah, I guess. All right. I don't know who this guy is. Anyhow, let's um, let's play another one. We're gonna play with um, let's play with uh, Erdnus Carlson. He's always been a, a guy who likes to play with me. What's my opinion of the dragon and the hyper accelerated dragon? Well, they're two very different openings. Um, I think that uh, the dragon is sharp and wild, but like dubious. And if white really knows his stuff, you should sort of just get yourself checkmated. But the hyper accelerated dragon, you also white plays the Maroxy bind and takes all the space. So I don't think that, I don't know. These are not the best lines. I played them a bunch when I was a kid, but I don't think they really stand up that well. So we're in a mainline Rouser now, which was actually featured today when Report needed to beat Nepomnishi with Black. The Rouser was his choice. So in fact, this is exactly the line how the game went, where it went h6. Um, and then he, uh, I think Nepo went bishop f4 and then um, and then d5, queen e1 or something. So, um, but yeah, here my thought was that black was totally fine in this position. And the big reason is that after e5, knight d7, f4, strategically speaking, I'm completely busted. It's like a horrible French, but I get to go g5 and he cannot play g3, which means that I will be able to artificially isolate the e5 pawn and that should be able to give me some counterplay. All right, so he doesn't believe me, but I think I should take his rook and I don't think he gets enough for it. Um, so yeah, this worked out well for black. Yeah, it was kind of funny that one report, like, I don't know if he felt like he needed to just win the game because, but I mean, I feel like report, if he wanted to draw this game with black against Nepo, like all he would have to do is just play the Berlin and watch queen d4, queen e4 happen again. So my suspicion is he was actually hoping to do something for a win. And it, it encourages me that he felt his best chance was the classical Sicilian. It means that I've sort of drawn the right conclusions or the same as him in terms of what should be the best way to fight for a win. Anyhow, now I'm a piece up. Um, and I should just be careful not to like let something bad happen, but probably castle and queenside is the easiest way to just be totally idiot proof, which is, you know, being idiot proof is a very valuable trait, uh, no matter how good you are at chess. Just get a position that you cannot possibly screw up. All right, so if he wants to leave me with the pawn, I won't object. But yeah, next up is castle long, and I'm totally safe in a piece up. And c4. All right, fine. Let's just castle along. I don't think I need to worry beyond that. If knight e4, just b5, kick this knight away. Make sure not to allow any. If knight d6, I have queen d6. So his queen has to go to d3, which is a bad square, and then knight e5, and it all collapses. All right, so good game, Erdnus Carlson. Let's see who else wants to play. Um, We'll play with um, Mark Lim, it seems like. All right, Mark Lim, good luck to you. 1700, let's see if I can play the Berlin repertoire and not lose and again. All right. Can you see that notation says B5 on move one? That's sort of weird. Um, but all right, we're going to play the Berlin repertoire. Let's see if it holds up this time. Bishop C5, of course. Castle. So against Castle, I believe we can get away with uh, Knight d4. And Black is able to exchange off his bad c6 Knight, which also means he should be able to play um, uh, to play c6 and d5 later. So here I forget if I'm supposed to take on f3 or if I'm allowed to just give him the e5 pawn. Because um, Castle Knight takes e5 and like Rook e8 or d5 or something looks pretty reasonable, but I'm just going to err on the side of caution and take f3. And then Castle and it's Black is very solid and is certainly equalized. I may have been able to just ignore him, but okay. So c3, but he's not going to get d4 very easily, so Black should be fine. I probably could have played d5 there, but I just sort of like maintaining more tension. 
Bishop e3, hang on, bishop g4, queen g3, bishop e2, rook e1, bishop d3, bishop c5, and he holds together. And after rook e1, if knight h5, he has queen h3, and he's holding together there too. So it's a little obnoxious that bishop g4 does not just win a pawn, but um, that's okay. All right, so... Um, I think I'm just going to go bishop e6. I don't particularly care if he takes on c5. I'm happy to, um, to see that change in the structure. It's a shame bishop g4 didn't work there. All right, so he goes h3. Um, all right. Um, let's actually go knight d7. I'm hoping to maybe throw f5 at him. Did I just blunder d4 and lose a piece in one move? No, I have e d4, bishop b6, and knight e5, thank God. But wow, I am blundering stuff today. This is really bad. D4 almost just wins a piece, but luckily it doesn't quite. I can take it, the bishop comes back. But I mean, the, the transformation of the position sucks because now his knight gets the c3 square. So I'm just playing this really badly today. Um, but at least I'm not losing a piece on the spot. He should go knight c3 and white should be better. Yeah, so I guess f5 e takes f5 is not great um let's play c6 and make it harder for him to play d5 you can still do it but i don't know if i would very much like to play f5 next move that was sort of my whole plan with knight d7 but it got derailed um so he heard me and doesn't want me to play f5 uh, if I go queen f6, does d5 win a piece there? No, it doesn't. Probably queen f6 is fine. Take with the knight, and then he's not winning a piece. Um, yeah, and if d5 here, I have queen f3 and bishop h3. So, yeah, okay. I, I've survived my ridiculous uh, blunders. Yeah, so this does not work. I can take h3. And then he will burn a tempo moving the rook, so he cannot play king h2, and then I go knight e5, and I've got my bishop back to freedom. Uh, so knight e5, and black should be fine. I mean, well, pawn up, not fine. So B C and I guess he can take D six, but there's just so much hanging stuff in his position that I don't believe it. I can take F three. I can go Knight C four. Kind of like starting with Bishop C seven before anything else. Yeah, let's kick this rook away. It will move. Actually, back to D one is the only square, and then I can take on F three and I'm clean pawn up, and it's bad news for White. He also doesn't have a great way to challenge my pieces then. Yeah, so let's go take and rook e8 and then um for example here i have this incredibly blunt plan rook e5 rook h5 checkmate it's actually not that easy for him to prevent so i think i think he just missed it and now i think he's made it bishop f4 i have rook h5 bishop c7 bishop f1 and his mate but yeah this is just made out of nowhere All right. Yeah, that's not going to save you. Rook H5 is made. Takey, takey, and Bishop F1 is checkmate. It's a good game, Mark Lim. Let's see who else wants to play. All right, let's play with Charles Four. Good luck to you, Charles Four. Let's see, should I play the Berlin or the Rouser, guys? What do you think? Let's play some Sicilian. All right, classical Sicilian time. You know, what's actually funny is nobody plays the open Sicilian with me anymore in classical chess. I mean, Svidler tried in Sinkfield Cup, but like, I get so much bishop b5 check on other sidelines, I just never get the open Sicilian anymore. And that's fine. I mean, I don't lose, so it's cool. 
All right, so he takes c6 directly. Um, I thought this line was not supposed to be great for white, but I'm also too stupid to remember what to do. So let's start with bishop e7. If he takes on f6, I have to take with the pawn, but that's fine. Um, this structure can be a little bit dubious for black if uh, his pawn is back on b7, but with the pawn on c6, it feels like we should just go bishop b7, d5, and strike in the center, and white has some long-term problems to solve. In general, we're always happy to see knight c6 like this. All right, bishop c4 is just, I mean, you really want to play d5, so feels like that's the move. And now I got this nice big center. If he goes e5, I can go knight d7, and he's hanging on both c4 and d5. So c takes d5, and now I should have a pretty nice position because of my big center. He definitely needs to put the bishop on b3, otherwise he should get made it on the b-file. The bishop on b3 I won't be able to kick away that easily, but um, I still like my position just because of the big center. Unless he's considering something goofy here. Actually, wait, bishop f6, bishop f6, knight d5, am I screwed? No, I can't be. He takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop e6. Or even rook a7, and I don't believe he has a win. Might have to play bishop e6, though. I mean, that should be good enough. My bishops will completely kill him, but... Uh, and if bishop c6 check, king e7, bishop a8, I have queen d2 and rook a8, and the bishops are good. He's thinking about it. I mean, I can't imagine him thinking about anything else. It's either sack on d5 or play bishop b3. But it's hard to believe second win d5 will work here. I mean, I'm so close to castle. All right, he wants to try. We'll see if uh, if he has some big idea here. I mean, you have to go knight d5. You can't do this and then not play knight d5. So question is, what happens then? So I'm really, after bishop d5, I'm actually going to think and calculate. Okay, now you're starting to annoy me. Bishop d5 is not a tough decision. You make the move and you hit the clock. Okay, so. If rook b8, he goes bishop c6 check, and if king e7, he has queen e3 check, and I lose. So I can't play rook b8. If rook a7, Bishop c6 check again. I can, would have to play bishop d7, then rook h e1 check, and I'm stuck. So that loses. So I think I can't move this rook. If I castle just bishop a8, I'm down material. Queen b6 is legal. If queen b6... What does he even play, actually? Um, he can play rook e1 check, and then I go bishop e6. Because I can definitely play bishop e6 here, and then I should be fine, but I'm wondering if I can do better. Because bishop e6, he can go, like, for example, bishop c6 check. But then I'm actually in trouble after, because I have to play king f8. If king e7, I'm mated by queen b4. So if bishop e6, bishop c6, king f8, Queen b4, queen e7. I mean, at the bare minimum, he goes queen e7, bishop a8, and he's got two pawns, and that's not that great for me. But it feels like he should be able to maybe just move the queen somewhere. All right, I'm going to go queen b6 and complicate this game. We're going to see if he can do something to me here. Because this will... I mean, my queen on the d file was just a huge problem this whole time, and I don't see a great way for him to punish me now. Because he can't play... And also, bishop c6 was an issue. So this move really feels like it should be right. Um... Thanks for teaching about the G5 Counter-Strike. I didn't see that move ever played in Mega Database, but it's the best one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's not a super common line for white, of course, but uh, yeah, that did seem like the way. Because if you let white bolster this pawn with like F4 and E5, he's got, you're like, you're, you're playing the French, which is already a crappy opening, and then like you're playing an even crappier version of it. Um, yeah, so here I think I have this under control. I mean, this was, a, a, I was, you know, props to this guy for playing very direct attacking chess, but I believe I have this under control. Um, he 
He's burning his time. So he gives me queen e2 check, and I think I can play bishop e6 here. So if bishop a8, he should definitely get mated, and otherwise I'm ready to castle. Bishop a8, I go queen b2, king uh, d2, and then let's say queen b4. If king c1, he's mated, he would have to come up to e3, and then I go bishop g5, and then he is mated. So, yeah, this should be mated. So he's definitely made it here. There's should be like more than one way to do it too. So let's see. There's also queen c3. I think queen c3 is actually the cleanest. So we got queen c3, king c1, bishop g5 check. If rook d2, queen a1 is mate, and he can give his queen. But if he plays king b1, queen back to b4, and then bishop back to f6. So queen b4 also works, but this should be the cleanest mate. Here, check. And then bishop g5, queen back to b4, and bishop back to f6, and white is mated. All right, so very uh, energetic game from white. I do appreciate that, but I think I got you this time. You can play queen e3 if you want, but fine, I'll mate you in 10 moves instead of two. This game is over. All right, good game, Charles IV. All right, let's play with um, uh, Power of Knights. Good luck. All right, so let's keep playing this classical Sicilian. I'll try Berlin's when we get some higher rated guys, but as I sort of said about the Berlin, you don't want to play it against low ratings. So classical Sicilian, here we come. All right, so e6. Yeah, so queen d3 is actually a relevantly different move. And I gave bishop e7 here, which is a totally different plan. But basically my point was um, if he had uh, played queen d... Yeah, so here knight c6 is not great. But basically the point is... Um, if I try to play a6, this whole plan with this and queen g3 is pretty good for white. But here... I should be fast enough to play d5 because um, I'm no longer hanging on g7. Hang on. So here there's d5, e5, knight h5, bishop e7, knight g3, bishop d8, knight h1, bishop h4, g5. I think I'm good there. All right. d5 should be fine. I mean, e5, I can always just go like knight e8 or something. That's sad. Um, I think e5, knight h5 is just working here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, if we had this position where I had played a6 instead of castling, then I'd be collapsing on g7 right here. Um, and if you play bishop e7 against queen d2 instead of queen d3, then this line with f4 is very dangerous. But I think because the queen is on d3, there's a key detail where black ends up with an okay position after f4, queen b6. And there's some forced line, um, knight c6, b c6, e5. D5, Fe5, Rook D8, and if White's Queen were on D2, Bishop D3 would win, but here he doesn't. All right, so he doesn't go for E5. That's fine. Um, so let's see. If I play D4, maybe then he goes E5. Um, can play like Queen A5 maybe. E5 is annoying then. Knight H5. Feels like I should be attacking him somehow, but I'm not seeing how just yet. Can't play rook b8, that's annoying. If I go queen b6 and then... I think I can go queen b6, actually, yeah. So, wait, no. Queen b6, he has e5, rook b8, and then he can just ignore me and take. Um, so, this is actually not sure. All right. Um, I'm going to go king h8. I'm annoyed by bishop h6 in a lot of these positions. I want to go h6 next. It's probably not an exciting move, but it is a safe one. Also here, it means that after e5, I can go knight d7, and I'm no longer worried about being directly mated. All right, so let's go h6 and challenge this bishop. He doesn't actually have to move it, because hg5 would be really asking for trouble. But um, 
All right, so there I should now be able to play Rook B8. That's a move I'm very happy to get in. And we'll see if he can hurt me here. It's definitely stressful playing the Sicilian. There's no doubt about that, but it um, can be rewarding. So here, with any luck, I'll be able to start playing Queen B6 and attacking him or Queen A5 or something. Strong center should count. It feels like e5 is a thematic move, but yeah, this bishop on g5 and queen on g3, like, and to some extent it feels like his pieces are actually sort of in the way of his own attack, because he wants to play g4, g5, but he's not going to. And this is why I played king h8, was that so in this position bishop h6 wouldn't be a thing. This is definitely dangerous looking, but I don't think it's necessarily bad for me. Um, like, if f5, I can just go e takes f5 and knight c5, and... Probably knight c5 is my next move anyway, and I don't see why this would be so terrible. All right, so we'll go knight c5, as I said. f5, I can always just go ef5. So there, do I want to play ef5 or do I want to take on d3 first? Maybe I can take d3 first, actually. Let's give it a try. And then he takes f5 and put the bishop on e6 and... It's not that hard to imagine white just ending up a pawn down here. Yeah, so he takes f5, and yeah, I'm not sure I believe the compensation. And at this point, like, he has to be at least somewhat, care like, respect bishop takes g5 check. I mean, that's a second pawn I can take with the queen, so. But what's he going to do? Otherwise, like, d4 could come too. It's I think black is very happy here. All right, so queen e3, if d4, bishop e7, d e3, bishop d8, rook d8 looks totally crushing. Guess he can go rook f3 there. Um, if bishop g5 first, hg, d4. Yeah, this looks like I'm sort of begging for punishment, but I don't believe he's going to make me. Um, I can always meet gh6 with g6, and so I think I can get away with this one. And actually, his king is not wildly safe either. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, dc3, there's uh, rook h6, rook h1, and go totally nuts. I just don't believe it. Um, and black should be good here. I could have played queen b6 there and just won an endgame as well, force him to take it, a b6, g h6, g6, and just bishop b6 next, and black should be winning, but yeah. Um, so this is an interesting game, but hopefully it's funny. It feels like it was a longer game than it was. It's only been 19 moves, but they've been pretty dense moves. All right, so DC, let's actually take g5 check first. No reason to let him play g h6. If he wants to play this move, uh, this should definitely end things pretty fast. All right, good game, Power of Knights. Who else? Um, oh, Jop is here. All right, Jop, let's play. Good game to you, Jop. Classical Sicilian again. Actually, I probably should have played the Berlin with him. I've already played a bunch of Classicals, but um, maybe someone else will play the Berlin with. So, Knight C6. All right, Jop, Classical Sicilian. C6, still sticking with my repertoire. Seven. Is he going to play the line that we saw today? This is from the Nepomnishi report game. Yeah, and I think Nepomnishi played uh, Queen E1 here. Yeah, he did. And then there came Bishop B4. And my contention was I mean, the end game they got was probably just best play, and then it should be like equal, but. Um, yeah, all right. So Bishop E5, we'll castle. Um, I don't really believe in white's position here. Black should be very fine there, so I guess I can take this one. I guess this way he can take with the bishop if he wants, but yeah. So this was the onion they got in the Nepomnishi game, and he actually got some vague chances, but it's pretty balanced. Um, it does feel like it's playable for both sides, though. So here it takes, and then Nepo played rook d4, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so bishop d3 is Jup's novelty, stopping... Um, Stopping f5, I guess. But let's just say I centralize my pieces and bring the king to e7. I actually think this endgame can get dangerous for white if he's not careful. Like, if I go king f8, king e7, rook g8, and then, like, h5, h4, at some point this central pawn mass can become annoying. So we'll see if I can 
make anything of this because this position does seem very equal to me, but uh, maybe I can find a way to mess the game up. So let's start by putting the rook on c5 and hopefully lifting it in some cases. Um, but uh, seems pretty equal, sure. So b5 is fine. H4, H5. If you want me to gain space, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> and eventually, if I can like bring my king to g6, and then um, I guess here he's threatening rook d6, so I should respect that. But at some point, these pawns could start moving. All right, so let's start with rook g5. Um, this way, I can get my rook to the right side, and then after f5, I'm not losing my h pawn. And at some point, I can hope to play e5. So I don't know if I want to do it yet. Let's start with f6, and maybe my next move is e5. And I could at least imagine black getting chances here. Probably not, but yeah, that's a good move. Now I have to come back. Um, actually, am I losing a pawn now? Not really. Yeah, let's go here. And then he can go take, take, rook b4, but I have rook b8 and fc4. I should go king d6, and the pawn ending is fine for me because I should have... Uh, protected passer. Yeah, so this is probably just a big top loss, but yeah, here, and then my thought was this should just be a draw. I don't think White's going to win this. In fact, he doesn't even get the pawn ending now because he took with the pawn. So here, and then, yeah, not the most interesting position anymore, but uh, let's just keep playing just because. So here, yeah, now, uh, I guess I can go king e5 or something. f4, king back to d5. And this is a big draw. So yeah, I mean, jump. I mean, I guess, look, Report played this line clearly because, or no, uh, Nepo played this line clearly because he was trying to make a draw. And the end game is very drawish, so it's not too surprising that's how this game ends as well. Um, let's just see if Jup does anything dumb, but I doubt it. He's a pretty clever dude. Just make any random waiting move and it should be draw. So let's go check. And then I'm gonna offer him a draw here. This game is very much equal all the way throughout. Yeah, if your opponent forces a very drawish position, there's not much you can do, but at least I thought I made something interesting. All right, Einstein, let's play with you. Oh no, this is, I'm supposed to play white. I'm supposed to play black today. Um, so let's play with, um, uh, who all is here? Um, not a dangerous ride. It's not a, it's not a banter blitz without you. All right. So dangerous ride beat me last time on a mass slip. Let's see if he can do it again. When I have all those stuff calibrated, right? See online. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so um, who else is here? Okay, Beth, I'm on. We can play with you. Five, four, three, two, one. Good grief. Nobody wants to play with me today? All right. Um, let's see. Oh, 5100 wants a rematch. Let's see if he can be 5100 again. All right, 5100. Let's see if we can cause trouble. Let me try E4 this time, see if he can beat me here. What is it with people not actually playing when I show up with them? Okay, abort. Nobody wants to play with me. All right, this guy just challenged me like three seconds ago, but he didn't challenge. All right, you know what? I'm going to let this guy play e5 and just play a reverse Sicilian. I'm sick of hitting the abort button. All right, e5, please. Nope. All right, let's see if we can play some kind of Sicilian. If he plays e5, we're back in the Sicilian. If not, I'm just going to play some stupid English with a tempo loss. 
Okay, so here. All right, so now we just have some very stupid position. I have a clean tempo down on a normal King's Indian because I played c3 and then c4, but I was trying to invite him to play um, e5 and play some kind of Sicilian. But all right, we're just going to make a game of this. Um, because I have a tempo less, I'm not going to try to play d4 and do like the most challenging stuff. I'm just going to play... Um, Play this like, uh, yeah. So we'll go knight d2, stop him from playing e4, stop him from playing d5, and then start throwing b4. <laughs> Say you were playing candidates in 2024, who would be your two picks, non USA, to be part of your team of two seconds? Um, well, that's a tough decision, tough question to answer because we don't know who won't be USA in 2024. Um, but, uh, no, no, I have guys that I like to work with, and I should probably keep that private. Um, so, yeah, so this is some typical sort of reverse closed Sicilian, and okay, d5 just loses a pawn, and all of a sudden, Knight's pieces are fantastic as well. Um, so, take this, and then take this, and I'm a healthy pawn up, and the d6 score is beckoning, so this just looks horrible for black already. So back to g2 is fine, and clean extra pawn this should be routinely winning, plus much more active pieces. Um, so now e4. Okay, um, yeah, let's, let's see a direct win or anything, let's just improve the pieces. Oh yeah, Vidit, uh, yeah, he's, um, I really have a lot of respect for Vidit. He's grown so much. Um, honestly, in a lot of ways he strikes, I mean, it's sort of disingenuous to say he doesn't feel that talented to me because obviously he's super talented, but like compared to other top players, I sort of see him as much like me as someone who really has made it to where he is today because he's worked incredibly hard and he's clearly put so much effort and time into chess and I... I have a huge amount of respect for him. And, you know, if he ever plays the candidates, yes, I would be delighted to be on his team. Um, he's someone who's just, he's, you can clearly tell by the way he plays and the lines he plays and the depth of his analysis and how hard it is to get him out of preparation. He's clearly someone who's put so much work into chess. And I really respect that a lot. All right. So here, everything wins. Um, I think probably this is the easiest, but uh, bishop e4 was good, f4 was good, um, you name it. So, yeah, everything hangs. What opening in this candidate were you most surprised by? I think, actually, if you were to say the one opening that surprised me the most was Report playing the Grunfeld. That was not something I saw coming. Um, not because the Grunfeld is a bad opening, just because, you know, it's Report. He doesn't... He occasionally will play main lines, but he never plays like, you know, super forcing, like very computer heavy main lines. Um, so I was a bit surprised by that, I guess I would say. All right, so here I'm up two pawns and I have a deadly discovery coming. This game is over. Um, I, Jeff, today I could already play the variant that I prepared for Nepo. Uh, so that's why Nepo won the candidates, because Jupp is one of his seconds. Makes perfect sense. Uh, he's got a good team. All right, so good game. Dispenza. Um, let's see who else here. All right, Batman. Let's see what you got for me, Batman. You're high enough rated that maybe I can try the Berlin. Um, so... All right, we're going to try this Berlin repertoire. It's the high-rated guy. Um, knight f3, knight c6. Let's go knight f6 and see if Batman can do anything against this Berlin. What's it going to be, my friend? Problem with the Berlin is, like, if white wants to just force a draw, there's not a thing you can do about it. Um, so I hope that Batman is self-respecting and wants to come after me, but... He might just want to be boring and quiet. So 
Let's see, knight d6, so now knight e5 is normal, and I play bishop f1 here. Um, so take rook e5, d4 comes, and yeah, here in the repertoire I gave bishop f6, and oh, he plays this one instead. Okay, so here um, they go in, I go knight e8. Uh, and the repertoire d4 is also possible, but yeah, this this leads to pretty drawish positions, but I think I gave a pretty clean way to equality. We'll see if I can put me under any pressure. So the big point now is they try to go knight d5, and then there is this line, um, bishop d6, uh, rook e2, c6, knight e3, and then white's aiming to play knight f5 and take the bishop pair, which is really nothing special for him because black is so solid, but at least you can sort of argue that he gets uh, a pair of bishops and that can sort of try to do something. But, um, but yeah, here uh, I had a different idea in mind. So then bishop d6, rook e2 is the move, c6. And what I came up with for the repertoire was that after knight e3, rather than say like bishop c7, knight f5, d5, knight e7 check, I wanted to play bishop e7 to make it harder for white to take the pair of bishops. So he has a couple options here. Knight f5 is the boring one. C5 was more dynamic. C4 was more interesting. But yeah, here I can go bishop g5. So he can still take my bishop pair with queen e1 and knight e7. But because I got my bishop to g5, I don't really think he can maintain it because it's hard for me to imagine he'll be able to avoid playing d4 or doing something to uh, exchange off the dark squared bishops. Right, so queen e1, d5, check. And yeah, of course I go king h8. I don't want to give, I want to make sure that I keep my dark squared bishops to make it hard for him to get rid of the other one. Yeah, so check, king h8, he takes this. Why do people want to draw with black and win with white? Well, I don't. I want to win with both colors, but just objectively speaking, it's very hard to win with black because white gets the first move and the deeper the opening preparation goes, it's really hard to actually circumvent that. Um... If I were in Hikari's shoes, would I have taken the Berlin draw? Um, probably not, but I don't, I think it's a close call. I mean, a lot of it just depends on to what odds do you, what odds do you think Magnus will actually play the match? I think he will. But so like, let's say for example, even if you thought Magnus will only, you're, you're only 20% sure Magnus will play the match and 80% of the time you think he won't. You also have to think about what your best chance of getting is. You might say, like, let's say if I make this draw, I have, um, you know, we're sort of using broad numbers here, but let's say if I make this draw, I have a 50% chance of finishing second uh, and a 0% chance of finishing first. And if I win this game, and if I try to play for a win on command with black against a guy who clearly wants to draw with white, my odds of winning are not very good. My odds of losing are much higher then um, you might say, well, if Magnus is 100% to play the match, then yes, I should try to play for a win on command with black and then you know take my 1% chance. Um, and then from there, still have to win the tournament. It just feels like your best hope is to just hope Magnus doesn't play and then do whatever you can to get second place. All right, so this guy wants to sack an exchange. Um, I think it's just not going to work, uh, and I don't believe it at all, so I'm going to take it. I didn't actually have to even take it here because he couldn't actually uh, move that rook. Um, but, uh, yeah, so people are saying it's an easy $3,500. Rest assured, no self-respecting professional chess player ever thinks about prize money when they uh, decide how ambitious they want to be. Um, I mean, it's very rare that you're playing a tournament where the prize money, like in any individual half point is, um, is wildly relevant. So, you know, I never at all consider like the financial ramifications of should I make this draw or not. And it's one thing if you're like, you know, if you're clinching first place, but nah, I, I, I would be shocked if that even entered Hikari's mind at all. Yeah. So now I'm ready for Rook CE8 next. And as far as I can tell, I'm just, um, an exchange ahead. So, First question you always ask for any exchange sacrifice is how good are the rooks? And if the rooks are good, the exchange sacrifice will fail. And here my rooks are good. So yeah, he has to play like queen f4 and then say I go knight d6 and knight e4 and it should be very easy. 
Are you a coffee or Fanta person? Neither. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink Fanta. I basically, all I really ever drink is water and tea, honestly. Um, I, you know, I would have a couple of drinks at like parties or something a long time ago, but even, I've almost completely cut out even alcohol now. Try to stay healthy. Um, I wouldn't say I've never consumed any, but it's very sparing. So yeah, here, the Spurlin repertoire held up very nicely. How do I feel about tournaments with no increment? Um, don't know. It's, I manage my time well, so it's not wildly relevant for me. So here I'm going to be a little flashy and take his rook and then take his bishop because um, he's actually losing his bishop as well here because if he does that, I take his queen. But there was nowhere else for the bishop to go. He could not play bishop e2 or g2, so he was losing a bishop there. All right, so Berlin held up nicely in that game. Um, Friedel, I presume that's not my old trainer, Josh. It's probably someone else, but we'll play with Friedel. Oh, no, it's, I'm supposed to play black today. I guess we won't play with Friedel. Um, so, Friedel, if you want to re-challenge me, you have to play black. All right, Connor Fitzpatrick, you're challenging right, so you're playing with the white pieces. Let's see what we can do. All right, time for the Sicilian. Uh, let's see here. I think probably now is a good moment to uh, spam my course, the links to my courses in the chat again. So I'll just do that real quick. Um, yeah, so here, uh, this move order is actually with knight c3 is a little annoying if you want to play the knight orf, but it's nice that in the classical you just totally don't care. Um, so here, let's go e5 and try to play some sort of Rosalimo structure where I got the pawn to e5 very quickly. I think this is what I gave him the course. Um, and then uh, here, um, black should have a very comfortable position. Certainly nothing wrong with it. It's almost like we're playing some kind of Roy Lopez where normally, like if you think about the Roy Lopez, black has to spend effort playing knight a5, knight c5, and then knight back to c6, and now I didn't have to expend any of that effort. And once I get my knight to d4, I'm very happy. And here, this bishop on b5 is sort of overextended and asking for a6, b5, bishop g4 is in the air. I already think black is better. So here, let's go bishop g4. Well, if bishop g4, he can go knight takes d4, and then uh, knight d5. So that's actually a little annoying. Um, Let's start with a6, that can't be wrong. Um, but yeah, bishop d4 and knight d5 is probably his best way. And white's probably more or less fine there, but maybe I can find a way to cause some trouble. All right, so knight e2 is a huge mistake. Um, so let's start with b5. And now, we should have a lot of good moves here. Knight, okay, now the game's totally over. I can take f3 and then take this way. And then um, knight takes d5. How excited are you about the Olympiad? I mean, it's a tremendous honor to play for the country that raised me. Um, you know, from the day I, when I was going to school, I stood for the Pledge of Allegiance every single morning. I know this idea that, you know, being proud of where you come from is not kosher anymore and not okay. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very proud to be an American. It's a huge honor for me to play for for the country I grew up in. Um, so I guess I'm looking forward to that. In terms of the chess, I don't know, it does. It almost doesn't feel real. Like, I mean, to play an Olympiad without the two best teams with China and uh, Russia both missing, um, it feels weird, but uh, you know, look, I'm just gonna go and play. That's what I do. Um, and you know, this may well be my last one. So, you know, we'll have to see. Uh, sorry, let's go. Nah, let's just take d5. I'm ready for bishop b7 mate next. And I thought about playing f4 to go bishop g4, but I, th I like this more and just go bishop b7. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously the US is, uh, is a massive favorite because we have, you know, we've, our, our roster has changed a lot in the last several years, let's put it that way. And we have a very, very strong team now. All right, so here, um, let's go G4. Okay, and then we have mate. All right, so good game, Connor Fitzpatrick. Uh, let's see, okay. Um, 
Uh, Friedel, you're challenged right this time. Okay, so now we'll play with you. And now you're not here. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Um, so, um, do I tilt? I do, but if I have a knight to get over it, I should be okay. Um, let's play with Aslan. Hopefully this is, this one I'm playing black. So I can struggle in like blitz and rapid events because I can just tilt and then I have to play a game like 10 minutes later and then it's a problem. But usually it's, it's pretty rare for me to tilt in actually a classical game. All right. Aslan, five, four, three. Okay, there we go. All right, but we didn't get e4. It was supposed to be about e4 today, but that's fine. We're just going to, um, we'll just play. I'm sick of aborting games. So this is my Samislav repertoire um, that I'm playing. Um, and I like this move order. And one good thing to know about the London is generally you should wait on playing knight f6 until white plays knight f3. So now that white is played at knight f6 is a good move. So um, yeah, c3 I thought was inaccurate because this move queen b6 is pretty strong. And it's a little annoying. What white would rather have is knight on d2 already here because then after queen c2, bishop f5, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to play bishop f5. But yeah, this end game is very good for black because I go b5, b4. But one thing that's very important to know and that is not at all obvious if you haven't studied this is that you keep this bishop inside the pawn chain. You do not want to play bishop f5. You don't have time for it. It's too slow. It's a much higher priority to get b4 through. And also the bishop can be a very good defensive piece on d7 in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, so now white's threatening a3, which would stop me from playing b4. But once I play b4... Structurally speaking, this game is more or less over, uh, and the question is, can White do anything to me in the meantime? I believe the answer is no. Um, were you surprised to see Vichy in the form he shows in past tournaments at age 52? Um, I guess yes, very pleasantly surprised. I'm about as big an, a Vichy fan as you'll find. I think he's an absolutely fantastic player with a huge amount of history behind him, and you know, not only his contributions to chess extend far beyond the board. I mean, you look at how absolutely ridiculous chess has become in India and how good their team has gotten and how many incredibly strong, promising up and coming Indian players there are growing their own talents, like which is a huge deal. And I mean, Vichy's had this incredible impact. Um, it's really hard to play chess when you get older. And I was not expecting him to put together the results that... Um, that he managed in Norway chess. I mean, he had his moment, you know, with Mama Jarov, which was not great, but um, I was very, very happy to see it. I was very impressed. Um, yeah, so here, Weiss is trying to trade all the pieces, but this is not going to work. Like, structurally speaking, he's totally vested. So, um, yeah, now let's start with knight c5 and get this knight towards those juicy a4, b3, and d3 squares, which all look very tasty, and someday b4 will come. So, for example, if he plays rook c2, which would feel like a thematic move to try to stop this, yeah, so this walks straight into b4. And if I get to play, like, b3, I mean, should just be able to take b2 pretty soon. Yeah, so this is bad news for Aslan. All right, so that just lets me play knight b3, but... Even if he had played like rook c2, if I just go like b3, rook d2, knight a4, and just start sacrificing on b2, I probably should just queen the pawns very easily. Yeah, so now this game is totally over. Um, let's see, take on a3. We done here. If you wanted to choose a variation of Lopez with black next to Bone to give you more winning chances, what would that be? The problem is like, it's not even just the Berlin. It's just like, um, if you, uh, I got white again. All right. I'm, I'm sick of aborting games, so I'm just going to play. It's not just the Berlin. Like if white just goes like e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop b5, or d4, he's just forcing a draw with you there too. So it's like, it's not, I mean, 
once you've committed to e4, e5, you've already sort of given him that option to um, to kill the game. So it doesn't really necessarily make sense to think like, if white wants to kill the game, you know, playing the Berlin is not a huge, you know, step in the wrong direction compared to, say, playing like the Archangel or the Zaitsev or something. I, I always thought like the Svidler Zaitsev where he goes like, Bishop B, where he goes like, he takes d4 and knight d7 was sort of reasonable. Um, that's probably not a bad line, but like, um, in general, I don't think it makes sense to play e4, e5 and say, oh, I need to play this move for a win against a guy who just wants to make a draw. It just feels like it's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, I'm just sort of freestyling this a little bit, but probably playing like a total numbskull. But um, yeah, I think if you need to play for a win with black on move one, it's, I mean, there's two kinds of games where you play for a win. One is just playing for a win in a random generic game when someone is coming after you and you know they're actually going to try. And then e4, e5 is totally fine. Even the Berlin is totally fine. Like, um, no, but the Zeitz of, uh, the Swiddler Zeitz of, he doesn't play rookie eight is his point. All right, so here, all right, I'm in a feisty mood. Let's go try to give mate. Um, this is probably ridiculous, but I'm sort of feeling like attacking. Uh, so, um, but yeah, if you're playing against a guy who really wants to make a draw with white, you're mostly just out of luck if they have any clue about opening preparation. I mean, I think that uh, the Sicilian or Caro Khan keep more tension, but like, I think you can totally play the Berlin for a win uh, in the Spanish if, if white's coming after you. All right, so here, of course, I don't want to take d6. Let's go bishop g3. And if I can clamp the, the c5 square, white should surely be better thanks to the nice structure. All right, so if knight c5, yeah, he's not in time for e5, so this should be fine. I'm going to go b4 and bolster this guy. And this looks miserable for black. All right, so he wants to trade knights. I think actually I'm going to take his bishop. It's a better bishop than it looks at first glance, and then try to take the c-file. All right, so e5, but does knight d5 not work here? I thought it did. Um, let's find out. I thought this was bad news for black. No, no, no. Queen c7 is coming, and he cannot even play ed4 because of bishop c6. And I'm never worried about him, like, if even if he got to play rook h6 and, um, and queen h5. I should be able to just go f3 then. All right, so that's actually a good move, which is a little annoying. Um, let's see. Uh, what am I doing? Hungry. Um, let's just be boring and go e4. Uh, probably there is something better, but here I should be able to scoop this guy up. He cannot play knight f6 because he gets problems on the back rank, and then I should be able to take this pawn from him. So he tries that, but now I should be healthy pawn up. Knight e5, fine. Take it. Um, let's go like... Uh, I guess knight c4 is a little annoying here. We're gonna go rook d1 to stop knight c4. Then, um, he's very insistent that he wants it, fair enough, but now I can give like a check and bring the other rook to c1 and still stop knight c4. Is the French refuted at engine level? I don't think you'll ever like fully refute the French. I think white is better in a lot of these lines. I mean, if you had like some, you know, 32 piece table base, I'm not going to claim that white is winning after e4, e6. It just feels like there's probably some lines in the French that are more or less playable for black, but it just feels like the burden is so much higher on you to, in terms of preparation than it is in other lines. I just don't think it's a great opening. Um, like I remember I prepared it really, really deeply at some point um, during the pandemic. And I played it against Grandelius and got a fine position, but um, I tried it against Karyakin as well. And I got a fine position there, but lost the game. That one, I think probably when it comes time for me to retire one day, I suspect that's going to be the game that haunts me more than any other for my entire career. But um, 
Yeah, am I playing the next CCT event? Yes, I am. I'm very much looking forward to it. I've never been great at this online stuff, but hopefully I'm getting better and we get chances. All right, so finally he goes knight c4, but it's not helping him. He's just down all the pawns. So take all this and then rook c4 at the end and I'm two pawns up. Oh, man. Yeah, so now it's just a few more moves to finish the game off. Let's start with f4. Let's go... Um, so I've recently heard Kamer say that the Tarash is a problem for white. Well, it's specifically a problem when white is committed to knight c3. So the problem is like, um, after like, if you ever play knight c3, then this sort of Dubov Tarash, I think is a pretty good line for black. Um, it doesn't work if white hasn't played knight c3, but like if you want to play into the Nimzo or like, yeah, I don't know. It's not such a big deal, I don't think in general, but um, yeah. All right, so we've liquidated the king side, the king side, and now I went on the queen side. That's easy enough. So here, he didn't even take my h pawn, but it wouldn't have helped him anyway. All right, so check. Um, you're saying the knight of instead of rook e eight, knight d seven. The Svedler's knight of just check like that was his game with Anish from the World Cup one year. Um. I forget exactly how it goes. I think he just goes e takes d4 and like knight a5 or something. It was some weird move order. Bu Shangxi has played this a lot as well. Um, but yeah. Here we go. And this game is over. All right, so let's see who else wants to play. See if I can actually play black. All right, Friedel, I'm gonna give you a third chance. Let's see if you can actually play this game. All right, we have left off. Let's try the classical Sicilian, that's always fun. If I can put some advertisement up for it. You know, any book? I'm not much of a reader now. Yeah, so one of the biggest appeals of the classical Sicilian is White cannot play the English attack. Like, this knight g4 move is pretty reasonable in the Nidorf even, but, like, when we haven't burned a tempo on a6, like, it's just a horrible position for White. I mean, Solom played this Nidorf with me last time, right? So here, it really feels like queen b6 should win the game. Um, let's give it a try. Yeah, I'm not much of a reader. I probably should be, but I'm I'm too focused on chess. I don't read like much fix or anything about like right, e5 and we're done. Yeah, so that was fast. I guess he can play h3 and pray. F3. I'll finish this. Just e takes d4 and bishop g4 is a clean pawn, and he's not going to develop his pieces particularly easily either. So here. Um, but yeah, there's some books that I've liked in the past, I guess. I don't know, but none of them are coming to me off the top of my head. Um, I've, I've liked some nonfiction. I liked Agassiz's autobiography. This I'm not even a tennis fan, but I liked Agassiz's autobiography. I thought that was a good book. Um, so uh, I would recommend that, I guess. So here I'm pawn up and white center is crumbling and his king has nowhere to go. So let's start with rook e8. And then if bishop b2, probably I should go bishop g5 and freeze the king in the center. All right, so here bishop f6, and this is falling apart for white very fast. Uh, should I go d3? I don't know. Add d5. Seems pretty violent. Yeah, castle, but now I can go d3 and bishop a1 and d4 and seems good enough. Well, actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go bishop e5 and try to mate him. Queen d8 can come. Oh, so in the Svidler line, there's actually no way to um, 
avoid the repetition, that'd be disappointing. Um, there was a game that I played with this guy, Ian Findlay, who's like, you know, 2200 or something, when I when I tried to copy that line without allowing the repetition. I think I started with like knight d7 or something, I don't know. You could poke around with that if you wanted. All right, let's go to c2, and now um, a1 is hanging as well. All right, that's a full rook. I will, if you insist on me taking an entire rook, then yes, I will give up on my mating attack. Actually, bishop f6, there's knight h6. So it's not an entire rook. Bishop f6, knight h6, it's just way too annoying. But do I believe it? Nah, let's just do it. Knight h6, g h6. I'm a poor rook, you're not gonna mate me. I have one bishop on h6. My queen can come back to f8 whenever needed. You will not checkmate me. All right, so let's start with rook takes e4, and then and bishop h3, sure. Let's go queen e6, pin that pawn and keep everything nice and protected, and I'm not going to get mated. How do you follow the candidates? Mostly, I try to, I usually watch without engines, and then when there's specific moments I'm interested in, I'll turn the engine on. I mean, they're interesting games. Like, you know, ultimately, what I spend my time doing, I'm trying to become a better chess player, and I don't think I'm going to learn that much by just, like, seeing with the machine exactly what all the best moves are. You know, I mean, these guys and the candidates are, like, all of them are just, like, a little bit better than me. Like, really not much. And if you force yourself to like try to make those same decisions that they do and you start to get them right as often as they do, then they're just not better than me anymore. And that's what you should be trying to do. And with the engines running, I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't, it feels like when these guys make a mistake, um, using that as an exercise to try to find like a better move yourself is sort of useful. All right, let's see. This guy is just taking longer than I was expecting, but all right, Friedel, you want to keep playing? All right, I was about to play rook h5 check there and then lose to touch move and have to play rook g5, which would be a bummer, but we're going to do this. Um, yeah. All right, I think we have time for one last game. We're going to play with Mr. Manatee. Oh, well, I got white again. All right. This was supposed to just be a black day, but it's fine. Um, last game. Good luck, Mr. Manatee. Let's have fun. I'll spam my links in the chat one more time uh, in case people want to learn anything. Um, and I'm happy to uh, answer questions that you may have on the Chess24 chat. <laughs> All right, so. Um, yeah, so Grunfeld, I gave knight f3, and then um, queen b3 is Russian system. So take, take, four, and then white's taken this massive share of the center, and black really has to be very aggressive to break it down. Like, if he plays one slow move, he's totally lost. So knight c6 is a pretty reasonable move, which Swidler gave in his course, uh, as well as been championed by MVL. Um, and then we get this very sharp line. So again, like, he should go knight d4. And then in this position... Thematically, black is dead lost. I have this massive center, and um, and he has nothing and an extra pawn. But like, I'm behind enough in development that he should be able to get some attacking chances. So like here, the there's two moves: b5 is one, and uh, cd5 is the other. So here, he sacrifices the second pawn and um, looks for direct counterplay with rook e8. And what I gave in the chessable course was e5, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but we'll see. Did you watch the Queen's Gambit? I did. Um, and I, I know a lot of chess players complained about it because in some ways it wasn't that realistic. I didn't mind it. Um, it's It was honest about, you know, some of the problems that you see and the struggles that some chess players face and that, you know, young chess players who don't have, you know, guiding forces in their lives who are just brilliant, but, um, but sort of not tethered in the right way they can really fall victim to substance abuse and promiscuity and some really destructive habits. And I like that they didn't sugarcoat that. And I don't mind suspending disbelief for uh, for the sake of fiction. Um, I thought it was a very good show. And 
you know, it was more realistic than any other chess portrayal I've seen. Yeah, so here my big point was I gave this movie five in my um, in my chess school course. So white is two pawns up. He will lose one pawn back here and often a second one, but he can end up strategically better anyway. So knight g4, e6, which buys me some time by shutting down this open uh, e file. So he should play fe6, and then I go h3. Um, I think I played bishop f4 instead of e6 against Maxim at some point, but this is what I gave for Trustful. So h3, he should go knight e5. I think that's his only serious move. Um, if bishop e5, there is some goofy variation that I can't remember. Which open Sicilian variation would you recommend as white for a 1500 club player who likes open games but struggles from much theory? I would just go uh, bishop g5 against, um... whoa, okay, this guy's not messing around. Um, I don't believe that for half a second, though. I would go bishop g5 against the Rouser and probably bishop e3 against both the dragon and the Nidorf uh, to try to like build your understanding of the English attack and then... Um... And then uh, against like other stuff, against any e6 Sicilian, try to play with against the Taimanov. You can play the, so English attack against Taimanov, English attack against Nidorf, English attack against um, against Dragon, and then uh, I guess it's Yugoslav attack technically there. And then um, against uh, Taiman the Khan, you can play c4 against the against the Kalashnikov. You can play c4, like play c4 whenever. Basically, play bishop, play the English attack whenever you can. Play c4 whenever you can, and when you can't do this stuff, learn some fresh things. Is what I recommend. I hear Chris Yu is one of your students. Yeah, I, I work with him a bit. I wouldn't say I work with him a ton. He's not like, you know, I'm sure he has other people he works with, but um, I've certainly been very happy to see the success that he's had as of late. I don't care that much about rapid online events, but I guess. Insofar that it's important to him, I'm glad that he's um, he's winning this event and playing very well. Uh, so, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play the U.S. Junior in a few days, which is a much more important tournament, and hopefully goes well for him. Yeah. So here I am a piece up. Um, just takes a couple moves. I'm going to give him my b2 pawn just to get my pieces out. But White is absolutely winning. So Bishop takes b2. I can go rook d1. I can go rook d1. And here. Um, so he gets my b2 pawn, but I'm a clean piece up and have consolidated nicely. Are there any guidelines that extensively cover the Maroxi bind in the Sicilian? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I should make an e4 repertoire for Chessable. It would be easier than having to answer all these questions. I'm just, I'm just worried it wouldn't sell very well because there's so much e4 stuff out there. Um, do you think killer chess training is worth it for a 1900 feet? Absolutely. Killer chess training is fantastic. All right, guys, I haven't eaten anything all day. I've had a busy morning. I'm starving. It's been a rough day. Um, good to see everybody, and I look forward to the next Banter Blood session. Field is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. No, it's just to move. the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app.